morning. It's Wednesday, February 19th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Finding Wisdom, and our scripture is Psalm 119 in Proverbs chapter 2. First of all, the psalmist writes, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I've tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I've recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I've rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. Then the proverb writer, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. I ran across a marketing ad for a new kind of Bible study this morning as I checked my mail. It has an updated version of the scriptures broken up and rearranged chronologically so as to put the order of the books in an understandable manner. The name is a trendy sounding single word, immerse, connoting a better way to get God's word into God's people. The marketing piece was well designed and got my juices going a little bit. The promotional focus hook was to get God's people reading the Bible together, which sounded really good. There were all the right buzzwords, community, intentionality, discipleship, and more. By the time I heard in my head community, it dawned on me why it sounded so good. Serious Christians had been doing this for two millennia. It wasn't a new thing. It was an old thing dressed in modern clothes to capture the way minds think in this century. It's Sunday school, shul, which is Yiddish for synagogue. It's church meeting all rolled into one. Sunday school is a term as old as 1780 when Robert Rakes began the first children's Sunday school. It soon spread to America from Britain. The psalmist and the proverb writer, most likely David or Solomon, or both, instructs his son to give close attention to the scripture, to let his life be guided by its wisdom. It has always mystified me as to why otherwise intelligent Christians miss this important advice from the wisest of the wise. I've known many believers who would make a regular habit of coming to worship but avoid the Bible study hour like there might be a plague. If you examine what Sunday school or small group Bible study offers, you can see why it's offered with a new name and a format, but with the same essential components. You have discipleship, class peer pressure of the best kind, a place of encouragement in the Christian life. There's ministry, looking out for one another in the ways that fellowship always suggests care and sickness, joy and blessings, faithfulness in all things. And you have community, a group of believers investigating the wisdom of God's word where you're covenanting together to live the best life of a disciple. For you today, did you miss Sunday school last week? Was that wise? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed